Hello friends, Mark here from the Christchurch video team. Today I'd like to share a little bit about God's unfailing memory. As I grow older, I have a tendency to forget things, and I'm sure many of you can relate, but I'm reminded in Isaiah 49, 14, that even God's own people, Israel, felt that God had forgotten them at times, but Isaiah assured them that their God always remembers. Please note the phrase, that their God. God says, I have engraved you on the palms of my hands. In verse 16, God has etched our names into his own being, so that brings up another group of questions. Question number one, are you following the right God? Remember what I ask you to remember in Isaiah, the word there? We have to ask ourselves who we serve or if we serve anyone or anything. Number two, has the God you serve given you a sign of his promise? Later in our video, I will remind you of the promise God gave all of humanity when he gave us the rainbow after Noah's flood. And number three, do you feel uncomfortable talking about God? Well, let's examine each question. Can you explain the universe? Can you explain the wonders of our body and life and still not believe in the one true God? We have God's own word, the Bible, to explain all of life's wonders from our beginning in Genesis to the end in Revelation. What other religion can give you all of the answers of life and a resurrected Savior? I attended the revival at the Jackson High School Stadium this past week, and one of the main points of the message was that Jesus is the answer to all of our problems. Can you say you believe that? Or are you still trying to do it all on your own and only need God when things get rough? Question number two was, what have you been given as a promise by God? At the revival, the speaker was talking about a man blind from birth. Jesus performed a miracle by spitting on the ground, making a mud mixture, and putting it on his eyes. However, the miracle could not happen until the man followed Jesus' instructions. And those instructions were, go and wash your eyes. There were three important parts to this miracle. Number one, Jesus spit on the dirt, dirt. Jesus spit on the dust of the earth. He was actually spitting on the curse of man's fall in the Garden of Eden, and the fact that he came from dust and would return to dust. Next, he placed the mud on his eyes. This was the anointing of the man's eyes. But last but not least, even though he had been anointed, he was told to go and wash his eyes in a pool. It was the man's choice to go wash. We've been anointed if we have accepted Jesus as our Lord and Savior, but it's up to us to keep going, to believe God is faithful. It is also our choice to believe or not believe in God. We're not forced to. When the preacher began to talk of the man's choice to go and wash, a gentle rain began to fall on the stadium. 
Do you see God in this? And when the man had made it to the pool in the sermon and washed his eyes, a full rainbow crossed the entire stadium of Jackson High School. God gave his people a sign that night, just like he did for another reason after the flood of Noah. I believe the sign that he had given the other night at the revival was that you're anointed. I'm washing you with this gentle rain, and I'm promising you that I will be with you forever. Finally, we come to question number three. Do you feel uncomfortable talking about God? Is your fear of what others think greater than your love for God? God gave you a life in your mother's womb. God gave you choice. God has redeemed you through the blood of his one and only son, Jesus. God has even prepared a place for you in heaven. Just like the blind man, we have an opportunity to be saved and have eternal life. 2 Corinthians 5.17 says it all. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, the new creature has come. The old has gone. The new is here. Remember, God never sees us as a wasted life, but as miracles. God never throws us away. In his sight, we have divine potential for new kingdom work. Are you ready for the challenge? Until next time, God bless.